Hello, I'm Hector Perez from Dev School. Welcome to this new video in which I will teach you how to create an image and place a border on it in different ways, like the ones you can see on the screen. Each of these borders has a gradient, which gives it an even better appearance. You could use it to place a profile picture of your users or in any other element of your graphical interface. Before we begin, I invite you to visit courses.devs.school, where you will find content related to .NET MAUI, specialization courses, c -sharp courses, and other technologies. Now, let's get started. We will start this tutorial with a project created from scratch. I have removed all the boilerplate code, all the default code from this project. What I have done is add an image. This image can be any image you need. I recommend that it be square, so it looks better in your project. In my case, it is this image that you can see on the screen, which I will use for the different tests. I have placed this page, main page, as the main page, so I don't have the navigation bar as part of the application. I will use the same content page, but with new code. In this content page, I will change the background color to black, so that the gradient looks much better. Once we have changed the background color, the next step is to declare the gradient that we will use throughout the different examples. For this, I will indicate content page dot resources and create a resource dictionary. Next, a linear gradient brush. I will place an X key equal to gradient, for example, and an endpoint equal to point 0.1 to have a top to bottom gradient, a color equal to 6C06E6, which is this purple color. I will duplicate the gradient stop, change the offset to a value of 1, and the color will be equal to FF228B. Now we have this pair of colors for our gradient. After the gradient definition, I will create a grid to place the different elements. I will indicate that I want two columns for the grid and also three rows of the same size. Inside the grid, I will create an image control with a source equal to profilebot.png. I will close the tag and start the application to see how it looks in the emulator. After a few seconds, we can see the application already with the image being displayed. Ok, we have the image. The next step is to enclose this image in a border. This will allow us to play a bit with the border and modify some properties. I will define a border with a height request equal to 200 and a width request equal to 200 as well, to have a square border. Inside this border, I will place the image control. I will save the changes. Here we can see the border already. We see a white border. We can visualize it a little. The next step involves modifying some additional properties, such as the stroke, which will set to static resource equal to gradient the gradient we defined at the top. We will also change the stroke thickness to indicate that we want a wider border equal to 15 units, for example. After saving the changes, we have this border enclosing the image, and it looks quite good. Let's conduct some additional tests. To do this, I will duplicate the border control and position it in column number 1. Now we have this duplicated border with the image. We will begin modifying some properties, such as the border dog stroke shape. This property will help us add a shape element. In this case, let's try an ellipse element. Save the changes and observe how we have modified the default behavior of the border. Now we have a rounded border in place. We have achieved this very easily. Let's increase the complexity a bit. I will duplicate this border once more and indicate that we want to place it in row number 1. Instead of an ellipse, which is the element we defined earlier, let's specify a round rectangle shape with a corner radius equal to 40, 0, 0, 40 to round only a couple of corners. Save the changes. In this case, you cannot see the changes immediately. We must restart the application. Now you can see the element, it looks quite good with two rounded corners with a value of 40 units. 
Let's continue playing around with these properties. Let's duplicate the border again. Let's indicate that we want to position this new border in column number one. Also, let's experiment with the corner radius property, indicating that we want all the corners to be rounded. Save the changes and restart the application's execution to see the changes in the emulator. Now we can observe a square with a completely rounded corners. It looks great, and we've worked with the different shapes provided by the framework. But what would happen if we wanted a more customized shape? Something that wasn't directly tied to the default framework controls or the default framework shapes? For example, I found this set of designs in Figma while browsing the internet. They give us ideas to use them as profile pictures with different shapes and closing a profile image. How could we implement this in our application? It's actually very easy to do. First, we need to identify the element we want to use in our application. Let's assume we want to use this image that looks pretty nice. In the case of Figma, we would have to identify the shape. Let's make the screen a little bigger. We can see that each of these elements represents each of the elements in the design. Let's indicate that we want to use this blue outline. Copy the element, paste it, and we can see it here. One point to keep in mind is that we cannot copy the figure as is. We have it in Figma. What we could do or what we have to do is to check the size we are using in the application. You can see that the border has a height of 200 units, a width of 200 units, while in Figma design the size is 400 units by 400 units. Therefore, we would have to indicate that we want this figure to have a width of 200 and a height of 200. However, we are also using a certain percentage or a certain number of pixels for the stroke thickness part, which is 15 units. We also have to subtract this amount of 15 units from the design. Therefore, we would have to use a value of 185 by 185. With this, you can see that we already have the figure with the appropriate size for the application. However, you can appreciate that the shape has been lost a bit. The shape does not look as nice as the one at the top. This is happening because this specific figure has here, as you can see, a rounding of 55 units. We then have to lower this amount to an acceptable value, for example, 35, with which the figure starts to take shape again. I'm going to lower it a little more. I'm going to set it to 30 units, for example, and with this, it looks very similar to what we have at the top. With this, we could then take this figure, right click, indicate that we want to copy the element as SVG. I'm going to open a clean notepad. Here I have it. I'm going to paste this content. And you can see that it is an SVG type element. In a moment, we will return to this element. Next, I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. Duplicate this border once more, place it in row number 2, column 0, and remove this stroke shape property in which we were using one of the .NET MAUI shapes. I will remove this and instead I will use the same property within the same element, that this stroke shape should be equal to, here we have to write the term path to indicate that we want to use an element of this type, path. With this information, I will go back to the file where we had pasted the figure's content that we copied earlier. What we're going to do is copy all the content of this path element into its property. We will copy everything within the quotes from the letter M to the letter Z. Make sure not to copy the other properties or you will have some problems. Then I copy all this content, return to Visual Studio, paste it, and in such a simple way, see what happens. I save the changes, return to the emulator, and we already have this customized figure that we obtain very easily. There are different applications and programs that will allow you to obtain this information very easily. Let's do another test to show you how to do this again. Let's select, for example, that we want to use the outline of this profile image. 
I will select the blue element, which is the one that really interests us, paste it and again modify the properties to have a width of 185 units and a height of 185 units. I modified the corner radius to have a value of 30 and the element already looks quite good. Once again copy as SVG, return to the notepad, paste the content and copy the information within the quotes of the property. I'm going to duplicate this border once more, copy the information, again replace the content and save the changes. In the emulator we forgot to add grid.column equals 1 here. If I save the changes, you can now see this shape we've obtained from the Figma file. You can make as many adjustments as you want, look for more elements with a custom shape and create the shape you want. I hope this tutorial is helpful to you, that it helps your applications and that it gives you new ways to use elements as part of your applications in .NET MAUI. If you liked the video, I invite you to subscribe, like the video, share it and click on the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video about .NET MAUI or similar .NET technologies. See you in the next video.